What up everybody? Back again here with our volume unit. Today we are talking about volume word problems and we are starring Larry the Snake. Give it up for Larry guys. He will be joining us on our journey today. Let's open up the box and take a look at our objective. Our objective today. Today I will be able to solve volume word problems by organizing my information. So we're going to dive into what these volume questions look like when they're word problems and how we can use our sides check strategy to help us solve these problems. Love that Larry's hanging out with us today. Here's our I do problem. Larry the snake's cage is now too small. He needs a bigger cage that is 24 inches tall and has a bottom that is 432 square inches. How many cubic inches of space does he need? So if you've been with us a while here at Instruct Beats, you know we love our sides check strategy. This is just a strategy that helps us organize our information, figure out what we're doing without taking shortcuts. So the first thing we want to do is write our statement. My question says, how many cubic inches of space does he need? So my statement's going to say he needs blank cubic inches of space. Now, because it's talking about cubic inches here, I know I'm looking for volume because again, volume is cubic units. So I'm gonna go back and look for any information that helps us figure out the volume. He needs a bigger cage that is 24 inches tall. Tall is another way of telling us that's the height and has a bottom that is 432 square inches. I know right here that this is the area of my base. I'm gonna annotate that. One, because it said bottom, which is like base, and two, because it was square units, and I know that is the area. And I wanna know how many cubic inches of space does he need. Now, we have did our statement, we've identified, because we did those two steps, we now know it's a volume question, now we need to develop our plan. Typically, I use tape diagrams when we develop our plan for most word problems. For area and perimeter, if you've been doing our lessons, you know that I like to teach draw the picture and label it. I don't require my students to draw a picture of a volume because it's a 3D shape and I'm not a very good artist and you know then it always comes out looking something like this and I try to label and it just looks bad. So for volume all I require my students to do to develop their plan is to write down the volume formula. Okay so I have the area of the base and the height. So I have volume equals area of the base times the height. I know I'm looking for my volume because my statement was asking me for cubic inches. I know the area of my base was just 432, so I don't have to figure that out using length and width this time. And then I'm just multiplying times my height, which was 24. Again, so if I'm visualizing this, I have 432 cubes on my bottom layer, and then I'm gonna have 24 layers of 432. So all I need to do to figure out how many cubic inches of space layer needs is to multiply 432 times 24. When you do that, I'm going to get a volume of 10,368. Now, that's not correct yet because I don't have my units in it. I have to have cubic units. So my I need 10,300, or sorry, Larry does, 368 cubic inches of space. Now our we do problem, go ahead and do this one in your notes with me as I do it. If you don't have your notes, you can check out the description for this video, then you'll find a link to a Google Doc that you can hopefully either print out or type in as you do it with me. The question says, the cage that Larry is in now is only 4,030 cubic inches. Joni found she could cover the bottom of the cage with 310 square inches of bedding. What is the height of Larry's current cage? So I'm gonna write my sides check steps to the side over here. And the first one is to write a statement. My question said, what is the height of Larry's cage? So my statement's going to say, the height of Larry's cage is blank inches. And I know that's my unit because everything else in the word problem was in inches. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm looking for anything about inches or anything about the cage. So when I go back and read, it says the cage that Larry is in now is only 4,030 cubic inches. I know right now that they're giving me the volume because it was cubic units that this number has to be my volume. Joni found she could cover the bedding. Okay, so wait a minute. Joni found that she could cover the bottom of the cage with 310 square inches of bedding, all right? And I know that this is the area of my base because it is square units. And area of the base is the only thing that's squared because it's talking about area. We're covering the bottom of the cage. And then if you don't know what bedding is, take a look at the video right here. You'll kind of see those wood chips at the bottom. That's bedding. So that's what it's covering the bottom of the cage. 
I want to know the height of Larry's current cage. Because of my statement and my identifier, I know this is a volume question, so I'm going to write down my volume formula to help me develop my plan. Then I want to think about what do I know? What can I plug in? I know the volume already. It told me right there. It's 4,030. I also know the area of the base is 310, and I don't know the height. That's what my statement was asking me for. Now that I've plugged my information in, I know this is just a basic multiplication division fact family question. If I'm looking for a missing factor, I need to rewrite this as division, okay? And I'm going to divide to help me solve for my missing height. Again, if this was a multiple choice test, what you could do, you could be a good test taker and you could do the guess and check strategy. You could take each of your choices, plug them in for H and multiply it by 310 and see which one gave you 4,030. That's a great test taking strategy, but because this isn't a test, we actually have to solve it all the way through. So I have to do 4,030 divided by 310, and my height is going to be 13 inches. I had 13 layers of 310, which gave me the volume of 4,030. So now I go back and write that into my statement. The height of Larry's cage is 13 inches. Why don't you go ahead and try this you try problem by yourself if you feel like you're ready. You can push pause, solve it, and then push play, and we'll see how you did. If you're not ready for that, you can go ahead and do it with me as we do it as another we do problem. Hopefully you just pushed pause and you solved it. Let's check your work. So it says Larry has a sister in Australia. Her cage has a little snake pool in it. The pool is 4 millimeters long and 12 millimeters wide. If her pool is 5 millimeters deep, how many cubic millimeters can her pool hold? So I'm going to write my sides check strategy over here. And I'm going to start with my statement. My statement should say her pool can hold blank cubic millimeters. And because it's asking me for cubic millimeters, I know this is a volume question. So I'm going to go back and look for anything that's going to help me find my volume. The pool is four millimeters long. Okay, so I'm looking, that's my length right there. Okay, 12 millimeters wide, obviously my width. And then here's where some of you guys might get confused. It says her pool is five millimeters deep. This is the height of the prism. Now typically I wouldn't draw a picture, but I want to draw a picture right here to kind of help us visualize this. Let's say that this is her pool, all right? But instead of it being on the ground, right, the ground level is up here. Most of you guys can picture a pool, right? The top of the pool is where the top of the ground is, and then you go down into the pool. So if you're going five millimeters deep, that's the same thing as saying that your prism is five millimeters tall. It's just starting at the ground and going down instead of starting at the ground and going up. So if it's talking about how deep the pool is, that's actually the height of the prism. So now I've done my statement and I've identified. By doing that, I realized I was doing a volume question. So I'm going to write down my volume formula as my develop a plan. It did not tell me the area of the base, but I have a length and a width. So I'm going to have to break this apart. I'm going to decompose it and do my longer volume formula of length times width times height. The length and the width are going to help me find the area of the base. And now all I do is plug in my information. I'm looking for my volume because I was looking for cubic millimeters. My pool is four millimeters long, 12 millimeters wide, and the height was five millimeters. So now when you multiply that, you go left to right, following your order of operations. That's going to be 48. And then 48 times five is 240 cubic millimeters. Because it's volume, again, it has to be cubic units. So it's cubic millimeters for this question. Hopefully you're able to solve that one correctly. If not, you're learning from your mistakes. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. We have a bonus question. The challenge zone. So we're going to, uh, if you want to try this one by yourself, go ahead and push pause and then you can push play and check it. If you're not ready for the challenge zone yet, we can do it together. If you want to turn this video off completely, that's great. Just like and subscribe before you do it. Um, I'm going to write down my sides check strategy over here. My statement is going to say he takes up blank cubic inches. So I know I'm looking for anything about inches and I know this is a volume question because it was talking about cubic inches. So let's go back and identify anything about inches or anything that's going to help us find the volume. Larry's travel cage is really small. He only stays in there to ride from his cage at Mr. B's house to his cage at his school. The travel cage is 12 inches tall. So I got the height 12 inches wide in 12 inches long so it seems like this travel cage is actually a cube but then it says if he only takes up one half 
of the volume, how many cubic inches does he take? So I know right now that this is asking me to find a fraction of a group, the volume. So I'm going to have to do an extra step here. So I'm going to use a tape diagram to organize my information. Okay, so here's my fraction model. I know that I'm going to be looking for one half of the volume. Okay, so I need to find the volume and figure out what is one half of it. So if you don't know how to do this, you can check out our fraction lessons. We'd love to have you check those out. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to find a fraction of a group or a set. So this is why I drew my fraction model. But before I can do that, I need to figure out what my volume is. So down here, I'm going to organize my information by doing volume equals area of the base times the height. I do not know my area of the base because it gave me my length and my width, but everything was 12. So length times width times height, 12 times 12 times 12. And when you multiply that, you should get 1,728 cubic inches. That's not the answer to my statement though. If I'm using my statement as a guiding light, I'm looking for how much how many cubic inches Larry takes up, not how many cubic inches the entire prism was. I have 1,728 split into two equal groups, and then I want one of those groups. When you divide 1,728 into two, you get 864 in each of them. And because I want to know one half of those, I'm looking for just this one part right here which means Larry takes up 864 cubic inches. All right, if you did not get that one yet, do not worry about it. That's a super challenge question. We always want to push ourselves above and beyond here at Instructed Beats. Hopefully you could do the first three. If not, you're learning from your mistakes. You're getting better each and every day. This is an awesome problem right here, but this was a challenge problem. So don't feel like if you didn't get this one correct, you don't know what you're doing. Hopefully you could at least start it out and maybe you could at least figure out the volume and then next time you'll be able to take that extra step to answer the question. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate you choosing to watch Instruct the Beats. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. We would love to have you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you again. Instruct the Beats, out.